This is Pachelbel's Canon in D. It's an extremely repetitive sequence of chords that you've definitely heard in your life. It's often played as the bride is walking down the aisle at a wedding, but it's also the basis for a bunch of super popular songs. When I find myself in times of trouble, Some of them are slightly modified, but these examples and so many other pop songs can be traced back to Pachelbel's canon. As popular musical comedians and countless articles have discussed, this sequence and other overused chord progressions can almost be seen as ways to manufacture a hit song. Something about those notes played in those patterns hacks into the human brain and people can't get enough of it. But besides these instrumentals that subconsciously make their way deep into our minds, What's another thing within music that keeps people coming back to the same old songs? A good old catchy hook. There isn't exactly one precise definition of what a hook really is, but it's basically a short, memorable, instantly familiar part of a song. It's often the chorus or part of the chorus, but it could also be an iconic riff or something too. So, what happens when you combine Pachelbel's Canon in D, a chord progression that is a certifiable way to create a hit song, and an earworm of a hook that you want to listen to over and over again, and lyrics that actually criticize both of those things. You get the song Hook by Blues Traveler. Blues Traveler is fittingly a blues rock band that formed in 1987. While a lot of their music is a bit niche, these guys are extremely talented and their lead singer John Popper has an incredible voice. After a few years in the business and the release of three projects, the band finally had their breakthrough with the 1994 album, Four. The upbeat, jazzy, blues rock single Runaround was huge for them. It spent 26 weeks on the Billboard charts and it also won them the Grammy for Best Rock Vocal Performance. And while this track is fun, I'm much more interested in the band's second biggest song to date, which was also featured on this album, Hook. As I mentioned before, this song combines two classic ways to make a hit record, Pachelbel's Canon and a wildly catchy hook. But what makes it so fascinating is that it's one of the most meta songs ever recorded. Hook by Blues Traveler is a song about formulaic pop music. It's questioning people that use those same old chord progressions and musicians that rely on a catchy hook. The song begins with these lyrics in the opening verse. It doesn't matter what I say, so long as I sing with inflection. That makes you feel I'll convey some inner truth or vast reflection. But I've said nothing so far, and I can keep it up for as long as it takes. And it don't matter who you are, if I'm doing my job, it's your resolve that breaks. He's telling you straight up, I am not saying anything important, but it doesn't matter what I say because you're not actually paying attention. You're just bopping your head along to the music because it sounds good. This notion reminds me of comedian Bo Burnham's take on the current state of hip hop and how it doesn't matter what lyrics you're rapping, people will listen to anything as long as it has a good beat. Baba Black Sheep, have you any oh, Yes, sir, yes, sir. But John Popper's clever songwriting is disguised by that dynamite voice that I mentioned earlier. He is singing these lyrics with a certain inflection. It does sound like he's gonna reveal some kind of truth or make me reflect. And once we get to the hook of the song, he's singing a catchy hook where he's criticizing everyone who keeps playing the same tracks over and over again because they have a catchy hook. It's short, repetitive, and completely meaningless, but it's instantly memorable and it's the part of the song that will keep people coming back for more. Verse 2 goes like this. There is something amiss. I am being insincere. In fact, I don't mean any of this. Still, my confession draws you near. To confuse the issue, I'll refer to familiar heroes from long ago. No matter how much Peter loved her, what made the pan refuse to grow. Okay, there are a few amazing lines within this section of the song. One is where he says, I am being insincere, which is the classic liar's paradox. If someone tells you something and then says, I am lying to you right now, 
If the statement was a lie, then they're telling you the truth by saying that they're lying. But can you simultaneously lie and tell the truth? John continues by saying that he doesn't mean any of this, but he wants to confuse you, so you'll keep falling into the trap of the song and not catch on to the fact that he's making fun of you. To do this, he starts referencing Peter Pan, saying, no matter how much Peter loved her, what made the pan refuse to grow. So stay with me here. On one hand, John is randomly throwing this famous story into the mix because, hey, this is what everybody does on the radio. Their lyrics don't make any sense, they'll reference familiar names and phrases just to keep you interested and bopping along to the song. John referencing Peter Pan for no reason at all is just proving his point about the true meaning of the song. He can say anything he wants to, and you'll eat it up. But this is where it gets complicated. These lyrics about Peter Pan become validated in the very next line. In Peter Pan, Peter had two choices. If he actually grew up, he could be with Wendy. But if he stayed a kid forever, that meant that he could continue his age-old cat and mouse rivalry with... Captain Hook. And that's what we get in the next line when we circle back to the hook of the song. John Popper singing and telling you that the hook brings you back. In real life, in music, and in this very song, the hook is what keeps people coming back for more. But also, in Peter Pan, Peter decided to stay a kid forever because Captain Hook kept him coming back for more. Wow. In verse 3, John goes off. Suck it in, suck it in, suck it in is him telling you to listen up. If your Rin Tin Tin or Anne Boleyn is nothing, it just rhymes and it's him saying, no matter who you are, you have to listen to me right now. And make a desperate move or else you'll win doesn't make any sense. It should be make a desperate move or else you'll lose, but that won't rhyme with the lines above. So in this day and age of songwriting where people would rather trade meaning for stuff that sounds cool, John is forced to write the line that rhymes, but doesn't make any sense. Make a desperate move or else you'll win. And then begin to see what you're doing to me is him saying, see? See how stupid and annoying all of this is? This MTV is not for free, it's so PC it's killing me. This is him complaining that if he wants to be successful, he has to fit in and sacrifice his originality. And the rest of this verse pretty much follows suit. Short, quick-witted lines about wanting to be original but inevitably selling out, pride versus success, conforming to the idea of catchiness, keeping songs under three minutes because that's what pop music wants you to do, his anger at all of the things he's discussed so far, and how with this song he's fighting back, but also he's really just doing the same stuff he's complaining about. And that right there is the kicker. John Popper wrote a genius next level song criticizing popular music and how anybody will listen to anything if it's catchy, and to hammer his point home, he did it through a catchy song. But the bittersweet irony of all of it is that Hook proved that John was right by being a ridiculously popular radio hit on an album that sold 6 million copies. Blues Traveler would go on to experiment and shy away from radio hits like this, and they never replicated this level of success again. He straight up told everyone that they were going to buy this song and that you wouldn't be able to stop listening to it. He was making fun of them, and they bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. Hey, thank you for watching that video. Be sure to check out Blues Traveler, John Popper, Hook, Runaround, Four, etc. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon, and thank you again. I'll see you soon.